All right, time to get in the position of asking ourselves, what does this hand do? That's the question we always need to ask. This hand doesn't really do much of anything, right? I feel like this is just a mulligan. Like, it's actually just seven lands. He's got a chalice in it. I'm gonna bottom a Tormod script against a random opponent. Watch them be playing like Dredger Storm, and I'll be really sad here, but I think we're supposed to bottom that in the dark. Scred. Huh. Do I want Chalice on one against Scred? It's probably fine. I mean, like, is Chalice on two that much better against Scred? Not, not particularly. It's like keeps them off of playing more Relics. gonna get dick tonight huh it's just it's one of those nights chat it's one of those nights chat I think I'm just getting an inventor's fair here. Don't really have anything useful to get. For reference, that link is mentioned in in the stream title. Oh, they're ticking this up. Huh. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna go get engineered explosives then. So here's a better way to think about it, Hater, Hater Hope. The decks that have legendary creatures have other creatures to hit in them with cast down. So cast down is still gonna have a text box against basically every deck you want a removal spell against in modern. Whereas go for the throat just completely misses everything in the matches where you need a remove in some of the matches where you need a removal spell. No, I think they just recognize that we're an Instaring Bridge deck, and they're just, like, setting this up to get rid of an Instaring Bridge proactively, which which makes sense. Which makes makes sense to me. Expedition Map Chalice of the Void combo going on here. Uh... 
Am I playing out this map so I can get my hand empty for the ensnaring bridge? I think so. I think that's the case. I'm gonna blow up this engineered explosives proactively because I don't want them to sacrifice it to this to deal two damage. Yeah, Bob, this would be like the extra removal spell, right? Like in decks that were previously playing like Doomblade or Go for the Throat that like don't have, like explicitly decks that don't have access to red mana is basically what it comes down to. Because there, there are decks in modern that play black removal that don't play terminate, right? Or can't play terminate. There's a deck list on your screen. If you're on mobile, please type exclamation point deck in chat and you'll get a link. Okay, so punished for playing out the other thing proactively, but that's fine. Getting, a, getting an okay spot here. Getting into an okay spot here. We need to find our way to a way to deal with this. I guess uh, this gets Spyglass, right? We'll lose it to the Relic of Progenitus, but this does get Spyglass, which locks out the Chandra. And Bob was right that because we played this out, I can't currently, um, what's it called? I can't currently cast Pithing Needle. So if I drew an artifact and got Pithing Needle, that wouldn't work because, because I have my Chalice here. So do I want to turn this into a random zero mana thing? Probably not. I have one, two, three. I could. Are there any? Oh, I'd probably turn this into a welding jar, right? Yeah, I'm just going to turn this into a welding jar. In case they have a main deck of braid. We can't we can't get Pithing Needle chat. We have a Chalice of the Void on one. Getting Pithing Needle would be very bad. We're gonna go get Sorcerer's Spyglass with this and cast it next turn. Looking at match one, game one. So welcome to the party. I forgot to start recording. That's fine. We'll just uh, get it off of the archive. Oh, I could just get the hexproof thing, couldn't I? Huh. Is that better than... Is that better than Spyglass? Yeah, we could get which... I didn't even think about which Bane Orb. This is target, right? Huh. That's interesting. Yeah, that's fair, Bob. Especially with like a welding drawing play. Like they might have a couple of they might have a couple of yeah, so now they have two planeswalkers. So yeah, I definitely just go get Witch Bane Orb, right? Yeah, the Chandra uptick doesn't target, but I have I have so many turns to like work that out. So we can still die to Chandra plus here, but this alt targets two. So I'm gonna go ahead and crack this and get the Witchbane Orb because Witchbane Orb stops both of these alts, and then I have seven turns to beat to beat her, her plus egg. This also turns off Pia and Kira Nalar being reach. So that's nice. This also protects my Tezzeret for another another couple of weeks. Yep, 
You have an emblem. <laughs> this isn't optional. This, this isn't optional. <laughs> Magic Online. <laughs> oh, that's great. Re, re, oh, we, 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 we. You think they're trying to click on me? Do you think, do you think they're like confused that they can't click on me? Alt, your Planeswalker concede the game. That seems like a really bad Planeswalker. I wonder why they're playing that. Anybody know? Anyone know why they might play a Planeswalker that says ultimate lose the game? It seems like a strange decision on their part. Chalice is real bad here. Uh, I'm going to leave one Chalice in. I came to the conclusion last time we were playing this deck that I should never cut all of the Chalices. Because sometimes we want to, sometimes we want to tutor for one. I don't think this is an Aether Grid matchup. This is probably a fine Spellscape matchup, right? Maybe it's a Spellscape matchup. Spellscape's better than this extra Tesseract. Right? Hey, Fred Week 4 with the six month resubscription. Thank you very much. Thanks for putting your Twitch Prime towards my channel again this month. I do, excuse me, I do appreciate that. Half a year, welcome back. What do we, what do we think? I could see Sun Droplet, I could see Spellscape. I could see gear up here. I could see an argument for not wanting the Spirate spell bomb. I could see an argument for not wanting the second Tezzeret. I definitely want all these Balding Jars post-board against a red deck. Probably don't need the spell skates, actually. Yeah, I think this is fine. I think I'm going to click submit. Yeah, let's just run it. No, it doesn't stop the Chandra. It doesn't doesn't really do anything meaningful for Chandra. This, yes, this is the best War of Invention deck I've played to date. Ten out of ten, out of 10 the best War of Invention deck I've played. Yeah, this deck's really powerful. Feels powerful from times I played. I don't know. If our opponent would have just like cracked the ratchet bomb on zero last game, we would have been in a real bad spot. From killing Padim. That's interesting. Maybe Padim just shouldn't be in my deck. I think this is a keep. Need some mana, but like a zero mana artifact is also a non, like a, another bauble or a welding jar, like gives us another mana here effectively. Hopefully draw a welding jar or a bauble on one here and get to go like tap Teleria West, Mox Opal Expedition map. Honestly, I think thinking about the fact that they have Chandra Torture Defiance, they're certainly not boarding her out. I probably just shouldn't bring Padim in. Because I feel like Padim's a, a type of card that we only want it when they when they can't interact with her. They very likely won't be able to interact with it. And the fact that they're leaving in a clean answer because they want it for other reasons makes Padim a lot worse. Pass here. 
going to hold on to this for now. Turns on Mox Opal. So if we draw an untapped land next turn, we can play and crack this. Ooh. Ooh, that's... Uh, yep. There is a pirate spell bomb in my deck right now. It's also a good draw. So what? I think I want to just get an island next turn. I guess I have engineered explosives to kill this Eidolon as well. With Relic plus Eidolon, they probably have they probably have an okay storm matchup. Like Mono Red doesn't really have their meaningful ways to interact with Storm. Yeah, it's like Bind versus Control. Like the opponent's like a pseudo aggro deck, right? That's so specific. This is probably that deck from the GP. That's very specific. Hey, you're that guy with the face that does the thing, right? Yep. Am I just getting an island here? Yeah, I do still have a spell bomb in my deck. I think I'm just getting an island here, right? Yeah, but like, I get to cast the ensnaring bridge, right? Which gives me a third artifact as well. You think I want a fourth backup artifact? I also have the Crucible of Worlds. I need a, I need a third blue in order to whir, so I think I'm just getting island. I need a third blue in order to whir. We just drew an engineered explosives. Well, that's excellent. So let's do this. So we actually got punished here for getting the island. If I would have gotten, um, if I would have gotten a dark steel citadel, I could have gone dark steel citadel, play this for two different colors off the mox opal, and then crack it and kill these. But that's fine. Transmute is an activated ability. Lightning bolt. Yeah, they're killing us real quick here. That's pretty good. No, I, I, I want to get my hand empty for the ensnaring bridge, and I want the extra artifact in play to gain health with right now. All right, so I'm going to put this Teleria West into play again, just like with the goal of getting my hand empty. I go to eight if I play this, but I get to kill both of these right now, so that seems pretty appealing. So we're taking four here, so we're dead to land bolt. We're dead to land bolt. Does my War of Invention get us anything useful here? I don't think so. That's really unfortunate. Now we're dead. Now we're dead. Oh, Bottle Cloister, yep. Yeah. Well, Bottle Cloister wouldn't make it enough if they left mana up. But yeah, we're just, we're Blood Moon out of being able to cast these cards. Knowing that they have Eidolon, 
Does that make me reconsider Defense Grid and Sun Droplet? I think it does, actually. I think it does. It's that I didn't want Padim. I'm going to trim a Tezzeret. Do I want to trim the Crucible if they're on Blood Moons and Relics? I think that's the case. I think I just, like, don't want to be on that plan. I think I want these. I'm going to trim a Pithing Needle. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm just going to cut the chalices. I'm going to do this. I'm going to bring in the Droplets and the Aether Grades. It's like, stem the bleeding by as much as possible. I guess maybe you could... No, I don't want to cut Expedition Map against the, the Blood Moon deck. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. So we're on Aether Grid and Tezzeret as our win conditions. Defense Grades for Counter Spell Stacks. No, I don't think I want to go to 21 lands. I think going to 21 lands is Greedy Artix. Pretty mana hungry. Sand's fine. It's got, it's got Spyglass, Bridge. I've got I've got Spyglass in my deck, so I think that's fine. I've got two Spyglasses in my deck. Everybody is paying me to play it. I also think it's okay, but like we've been paid to play it a bunch. I basically am only playing decks people have paid me to play these days. A good, good, strong curve here. This will give us a heads up if we need to like go quarter ourselves aggressively. All right, well, their hand is pretty bad. Do I just like name this relic so they can't cycle it? I'm just like 10 out of 10 naming relic of progenitus here, right? The rest of their hand doesn't really do anything. I'm sure they're just gonna like rip mono lands here, but I think cutting them off this cantrip is fine. Gonna curve bridge into bottle cloister here. Nice and clean. Just tap it in. Idle on, bro. Idle on, Ted. What's going on, Parasol? Yeah, I uh, we've been going for almost two hours now. I, uh, I was on this morning, and then you know, I don't have anything going on this weekend, so I want to work through the donation queue a little bit. I appreciate you setting up your Twitch Prime. We've been going for a little bit. This is our first match with this deck. I think I plan to play this deck, and then one more tonight. If they destroy our Bottle Cloister, it'll be very, very sad. But if they don't destroy our Bottle Cloister this turn, we should run away with this game very quickly. Ratchet Bomb. This is game three. We do get to draw an extra card here, which is great for us. Were of Invention. Oh, it really sucks that uh, <clears throat> I don't have a Dark Steel Citadel. These Ghost Quarters are super awkward. So their hand right now is Chandra, Torture, Defiance, Koth, Eternal Scourge, P and Cure, Nalar, and then one card I don't know. I have a second Spyglass in my deck, right? Pretty sure. Yeah, there's two in my 75. Oh, you know what? I should have left up both my Ghost Quarters here, because if they cast a Blood Moon, I definitely want to Ghost Quarter myself twice. So that was a missequencing on my lands for sure. Definitely played my lands in the wrong, wrong order here. Yep. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, Keep this Chandra in check here. This 
still works even when it's tapped, right? Yep. Darksteel Citadel would be a great draw, so let us turn these ghost quarters into islands. Another War of Invention. That really sucks. Um, I guess I'm casting this and then killing their idol on here. Oh, I should have done this the other way, right? I should have cast the ensnaring bridge and then I could have had the bauble untapped. Yeah, small sequencing mistake on my part here. Do I want to play this other bridge out even though? I guess that's a good question. I think they're going to ratchet at three. Hey, Samuel Jackson with the, the two month Twitch Prime resub. Thank you very much and welcome back. I do appreciate that. As always, subscriptions are the best way you can support what I do here. I think if we brick on the blue sources next turn. We will just ghost quarter ourselves aggressively and then we're up sorcerer's by glass. I didn't kill their Eidolon on their turn because I wanted to cast another spell and not take two damage from it. I mean, this ratchet bomb is not getting cracked. The ratchet, the ratchet bomb is staying, staying where it is. Yeah, I definitely, definitely missed sequence, though. I should be drawing a third card this turn, and I'm not. Another, another Ghost Quarter. Yeah, I guess I deserve this. So, my board, I'm probably dumb. I need to stop boarding out the, uh, need to stop boarding out my copy of, what's it called? Um, I have one, one copy of Crucible World. I should just never board that out. I'm gonna float a blue here and take myself off of this. Go get another spyglass here. Koth, Scourge, Pia, sure. So this is going to name Ratchet Bomb. And then this next word is going to get our what's it called card that, uh, Whatever that silly card is, um, the one that gives us hex proof. All right, so Koth is gonna alt tier. Chandra is gonna alt tier. Let's just keep those keep these nerds in check with gear up here, Aether Grid. Yeah, which bay which bay more is the next one we want? Hopefully, we can just draw an island. And not have to ghost quarter myself again. That would be nice. Actually, I'm going to pull the trigger on this. Because I would really like an island. here oh no not a storm breath dragon how will we ever win the game yes god bless dark steel so dark steel citadel lets us do this very nicely the one cmc is really relevant because tezzeret the seeker is able to 
go get a Witchbane Orb right away, whereas he can't go get the other one right away. So I'm going to go ahead and whir here. Let's do this now proactively. So the Chandra keeps going up, but we're going to be able to kill her with our gear up here, Aether Grade. And now, so next step is kill Chandra. Step after that is start putting welding jars into play so we can keep our lock going. And then eventually we will kill them as well with either Tesserate or gear up here, Aether Grade. So again, just at every point where you're playing this deck, you just want to be closing doors one at a time. Like, all right, what's what's the most immediate way they're going to kill us? How do we stop them from killing us in that manner? Why did I even shoot the cough? I don't know. It's probably bad. I'm going to kill the Chandra this turn cycle anyways, though, right? I get to do... Yeah, I get to do two to her at end of turn, and then I have eight artifacts, so I can do four on my next turn. So the Chandra's going to be out of the picture here very quickly. Hods of misclicking welding jar. While using Aether Grid. Stop it. Don't terrify me like that. This card actually could kill us too. No. Um, I do need to kill the Storm Breath Dragon at some point. I just go get another island here, I think. Maester, with the five-month resubscription. Thank you very much and welcome back. I do appreciate the continued support. As always, subscriptions are the best way you could support what I do here. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome back. So they only have one, two, three, four, five. They have six mana here. Maybe I'm supposed to kill the tes this, this first, right? Well, I guess I'm emptying my hand out for the most part here. Yeah, I guess that's not true. I guess I'm just killing the Chandra. If they want to, like, if they draw a land, is that fine? So do I want to kill Chandra or the Stormbreath Dragon here? The Chandra just does two, right? But she also potentially draws them into Artifact Hate. Yeah, I can mostly just get empty-handed, right? Yeah, I'm just going to kill the Chandra. God, these prompts are so miserable. I can't wait till we can just target Planeswalkers directly. That will be very nice. Well, this is quick. So if they draw a land, they can do it. They can do it on my draw step. Yeah, Tez does give us another ping. That's why I played him out. Oh, I can shoot the dragon in response. You're right, because it doesn't get the counters until it activates. Yeah, you're right. Chat is correct. I can just kill it in response. Yeah, so we definitely want to kill the Chandra because we can kill the dragon in response. Yeah, that's way better. Much, much better. So Sands, Sands is Shattering Spree or a Shatterstorm. We, we pretty much have this game locked up. Sands, Sands really oppressive hate card. We cannot lose. And that's the thing about playing decks like this. Sometimes, sometimes they're just going to have the hate card and they wanted it more than you and that's okay. 
That's okay. Sometimes they just want it more than you, Chad. Zero for a welding jar. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, but Lantern Control is miserable, and this deck is fun. So that's that's a problem Lantern Control has that this deck doesn't have, because I hate playing Lantern Control. And I play Magic to have fun, so by and large, you know. You know, that's weird. And next turn, we'll kill them with a the Tizzle. All right, good, we're done here. We're done here, classic. God, this deck takes, if you're interested in grinding moto value, this is not the deck for you. This deck is consistently, I think we've played it twice now and we've had two plus hour leagues both times. It seems fine. It's not super fast, but it's got interactive tools. All right, Tron. Tron, this is a matchup that will get much better when we have Damping Sphere. Much better. This hand's not particularly good against Tron, but I don't think this deck is a terrible Tron matchup in general. They can probably just turn three Karnas here and then we'll be very sad, but I just play the decks that people send me money to play. I don't really have personal biases in any specific direction. Maybe their hand is a bunch of eggs and no payoffs and then this chalice will win the game. We're only seven days away from Damping Sphere on Magic Online, which sounds great. I almost just don't even wanna play this match just because, yeah, I'm just not gonna play this match. I'm just not gonna play this match. Let's just, let's just move on to the next one. So like, it's not value. So like, if I'm thinking about playing this deck at a tournament and I'm not playing, and then when I play that tournament, I'm gonna have Damping Sphere. Like, it's not valuable for me to like try and play this matchup now because like any information that I'm going to gain from this matchup is completely useless because I'm gonna have this really powerful hate card slash bullet that's gonna skew the matchup in my direction once we once I'm actually playing it. Damping Sphere isn't a one card beat Tron, but Damping Sphere is a very important piece in a winning puzzle for beating Tron. So again, just like just like Blood Moon doesn't beat Tron on its own, Damping Sphere won't be a one card beat Tron. It's it's not. So I feel like a lot of Magic players are are like used to like the Stony Silences of the world, and they're like, well, I'm just gonna cast this Damping Sphere, and my Tron opponent's gonna die. That's not how this is gonna work. You're not, you're not just going to beat Tron by playing this card out. Yeah, a sphere is also good because it's good against more than just Tron. I agree with that assessment. We might not be able to get our hand empty fast enough. Depends. They mulligan to five, so maybe their hand will be a little bit slow.
Yes, that's also true. On the on the draw, the fact that you can play Damping Sphere before they try on you without a Birds of Paradise is a big deal. Yes, yeah, and, and just just like Blood Moon, the Damping Sphere is going to have to be backed up by pressure or a clock or other disruption. But Damping Sphere is certainly a piece in a winning puzzle. So we're taking two here. Remember, we're virtually one lower than we're currently listed because of the Smog Fanatic. Need to need to get stuff into play ASAP here. <sighs> they did miss two damage. That was good for us. I was excited when they just attacked, and I was like, oh good, they're not playing anything. And they played Mog War Marshall. I was like, oh, alright. So my goal here is just get my hand as empty as possible, right? So I should just play. I should play another Chalice on one, and then I should cast this Graph Digger's Cage. Just to get it out of my hand. This deck is nowhere near as good as Lantern is, is getting, at getting its hand empty very quickly. This deck is very, very bad at getting its hand empty quickly. You think I should Chalice on zero? You think it's like bridge chalice on zero there? Cause like I can't whir next turn regardless unless I drip a blue source. So that seems a little bit loose. So I'm taking four down to nine here. I'm at a virtual eight from the Mog Fanatic. So I'm dead in three currently. I mean like Eldrazi Tron's like playing reasonable magic. Oh, we're only taking three this turn. So that actually means we that adds a turn to our clocks. So it's actually pretty good for us. Getting the ensnaring bridge down. Hopefully we draw a zero mana artifact this turn. So that way we can get bridge down. All right. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And unfortunately I can't play this. So if they go like land goblin chieftain, we're going to die. Again, our lack of blue mana kind of coming back to bite us. I kind of want to trim some of the colorless lands in their deck because this is not the first time that I've like had trouble casting words in this deck consistently. I feel like this deck has trouble casting word more often than not. That could just be like sample size bias speaking. So we're going to five here, which is a virtual four because of the Mog Fanatic. Or sorry, we're going to four because of the Foundry Street. Zero cost, please. Zero cost or blue land. Bottled Cloister. JK. JK, that's the one I wanted. Just kidding. Dang. Is that a good one, opponent? I'm pretty sure all of their reach costs one mana. I'm pretty sure all of their reach costs one mana. Bottle it up. We did it, Reddit. Whoop. The, the long read bottled cloister pause. The long, sad read bottled cloister pause. And it's funny too, so like the person that, that originated this archetype and was working on it, they actually have one less blue source than I do. 
they cut an island. They cut a land for a pirate spell bomb, and I cut I cut field of rune because I like casting my spells. Because of map, I don't think that's true. But I didn't actually count, so maybe. Yeah, I, th I think we were short, but I didn't actually count it. So maybe you're right. Oh, actually, this is just free to play, right? Cause it, oh, never mind. Ha, huh. right? Chalice on one. Whatever. Mistakes were made. Just, just in case they have reach. All right, based on how they're auto passing, I'm assuming they can't win the game anymore. Maybe, I think I'm going to, just in case they open a braid in their main deck, I think I'm gonna set a donation goal to go to the KY Open, and I think if I go to that, I'm gonna set it, I'm gonna set it to play this deck. I've been enjoying playing this deck, it's been a lot of fun, it's got a lot of, a lot of neat lines in it. All right, so now, now that we've basically locked our opponent out of the game, we're finally getting to the, let's win the, win the game portion of the game. Um which we'll start we'll, we'll actually start winning the game next turn so we're going to go ahead and tutor for crucible yeah opponent opponents firmly locked out and probably just waiting to see our win condition so this is how this deck actually wins wins the game we go get crucible of worlds and then we get modern staple ipnu rivulet into play eventually so we'll tutor for Ipnu Rivulet here. And then over the course of the next grueling minute here, we'll uh we'll mill them out with Ipnu Rivulet. I play magic very quickly. I play magic very, very quickly. This is definitely a grid matchup. This is a Tezzeret out matchup. This is definitely a Sun Droplet matchup. This is definitely a Padim matchup. Uh, Chalice is great here. Explosives. Is Explosives actually that good? Expedition map's a little slow. Is Explosives good against our opponent's deck? I guess they have a lot of ones. Do I want to just cut all the maps? Is Torpor good enough? Torpor is probably not good enough. Maybe I just want to do this. How do you feel about that? I'm like putting this on one pretty aggressively anyways. I don't want any of these other cards, right? Yeah, I think the E's are fine. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. Our mana was a little clunky that game, but the, the, the clutch bottom place to rip got us out of it. Um, This hand actually plays turn one chalice for one, right? So I'm gonna keep the shit out of this. I'm gonna just slide this out on zero and go like zero citadel mox play chalice for one. Yeah, maybe we'll see. I don't know if I want to do a costume again so soon. I'll probably do a costume. One map to keep for the searching is interesting. What format are we playing? Turn one, chalice for one, go. Yeah, I agree, Spawn. If we do a costume every time, it stops being special. I 
I also don't intend to go to that many opens. I don't know. Like traveling to events is a lot. It's a lot of lot of effort. No, I'm like three or four cards different at this point, I think. I'd have to double check. The Goblins deck is called Eight Whack because they play the card Goblin Bushwhacker and they also play the card Reckless Bushwhacker. So there are eight cards that whack in their deck. Do you have a two mana Goblin? What a tilt. So I'm certainly playing this. I think Justin said he can't he can't be on a team that weekend because he's going out of town. What am I doing with this Artificer's Intuition? I'm certainly playing this Academy Runes out. Well, the problem with the Engineered Explosives is that it kills my Mox Opal and it kills my Chalice of the Void, so I don't think I want to do that. I did get a haircut this afternoon. So I don't I don't think I want to kill take these off the board. Chat, there's a chalice on one. Don't suggest we get one mana card, so don't do it. Can't do it. We don't actually have that many useful things to get here, do we? I think it's just Walding Jar. They've got us on a six turn clock here. We do need we do need to hit a live one. And unfortunately we are choked on blue mana again here. So like War of Invention is not gonna do it. I don't think they actually have that many two mana things though. I could see that Psycho Smurf. I could see C Spellscape being reasonable. Speaking of cards that are reasonable, yes, please. Yeah, I don't think there's any other ones or zeros I want to get here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this Citadel into play. The long read sun droplet pause. <laughs> they must have like five one mana spells in their hand they must have like five one mana spells in their hand <laughs> thank you thank you thank you to everybody who's hanging out here tonight my name is jeff hogan i'm a full-time tcg player and content producer here on twitch if you are enjoying my content you want to help me make more of this help me keep doing this full-time please consider subscribing to my channel my subscribers are the reason i'm able to do what i do as often as i do it if you're one of the many people in the world who pays for Amazon Prime, um, Amazon Prime, if you link it to your Twitch account, gets you Twitch Prime included for free. And Twitch Prime gets you a free subscription to a channel of your choice every single month. Again, it costs you nothing extra and it still supports the, the streamer that you put it towards. You can also support my content by supporting my sponsors. MTJoeTraders.com would love to buy and sell Magic Online cards with you. And if you use code Hoagland PayPal at checkout with them, you'll save 8% on your singles orders there. Uh, CoolStuffInc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles. Using promo code JEFF5, you can save 5% on Magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. InkedGaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience. Using code JEFF12, you can save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, binders, and bags with them. And finally, this stream is made possible by viewers like Anironix and you. Anironix likes to remind you at the very least, make sure you hit that follow button. Anironix, Justin, and you. Sorry, went on autopilot there. Ball... Balasar11, thank you very much for that Twitch Prime support. I do appreciate that. So we're sending your Amazon fun money this way this month. It is exactly like that. So thank you. I know there's a lot of excellent people streaming on Twitch, and I appreciate you putting your, your towards there. I did get a haircut. Thank you. My wife did a good job. Didn't didn't even didn't even cut my ears or nothing. 
It was get it was getting a little scraggly, getting a little crazy eyed. I hope this is humans. Humans is a matchup excellent. I I genuinely have no idea how this matchup is supposed to play out. So I am I am excited to play this matchup. I'm gonna cast this Chalice of the Void for one, even though it's not particularly good in this matchup, because it's better for us on one than zero. And I um I, I need artifacts to turn on my Mox Opal so I can cast these words eventually. Uh, Mark Olympics, if you're resubscribing, you need to refresh your browser page and then hit the send notification. It gives you a chance to put a little fun message in there to pop up on the screen. At any rate, thank you very much for resubbing, Mark. If you're sending your fun money this way again this month. If you offer me, if you offer me during your view, I get a free Lancer League dose scoop. You're right. Stop it. Get right on out of here. This is going to name ensnaring bridge and we're dead. Feeling pretty dead. Feeling pretty dead. Um. So what do I get to do here? I get to... I get to ghost quarter myself for an island because this mana base feels really miserable. And then I get to cast Whir for Pyrite Spellbomb and Pyrite Spellbomb this, I guess. Yeah, I have a Pyrite Spellbomb in my main deck. We also have Engineered Explosives. I could also just Whir for a bridge, but it keeps this bridge in my hand. Well, I can Whir for a bridge this turn, right? Blue, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, right? You have six things. Yeah, I guess we're just Whirring for bridge. I'm gonna go ahead and whir in response here in case this is a Thalia or another meddling mage naming whir of invention. Whir for bridge, whir for bottom clear. So the problem here again is that I'm putting myself down a land to do this. So now I need to draw a land next turn in order to get the uh, get the other thing. Yeah, bridge plus cloister should be a game one lock, I believe. It's weird. It's weird you have Meddling Mage on this card. How did it get into play? Is Moto bugged? Maybe you should file for comp opponent. Have you considered filing for compensation? <laughs> Alright, and then uh, assuming this isn't a Thalia or a Kite Sail Freebooter, we get to rip a land. This is a Meddling Mage. Okay. You're right. It doesn't beat Hierarch. You are correct. They named War of Invention. Alrighty. So we dead? I think we're dead. We have we have three engineered explosives in our deck. I'm not dead yet. Three copies of engineered explosives. Yeah, this could be spooky. I don't know. War of Invention is definitely our best card, and we certainly have three of them left. So I'm a little inclined to just say that, like, that's just, like, a reasonable thing to name. Yeah, we can just draw a bottle cloister, too, here, so. The first mage is on a staring bridge. Yeah, they just named, they just named good four ofs. They named four ofs that beat us, that beat them. This is game one, so we don't have Gear of Aether in our deck just yet. Reflector, sure. Did they misclick? Nah, I mean, if they name Bottle Cloister, they're just, like, familiar with our deck list, right? Like, Bottle Cloister Engineered Explosives are, like, good names for the opponent here at this point. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I think naming War there is just, like, good magic.
Welding jar. Oh, this is actually pretty good for us here because Artificer's Intuition lets us get Ensnaring Bridge out of our hand. Unfortunately, I can't get a one mana thing. Oh, I can get Engineered Explosives here, right? I can get my explosives, right? Yeah. Oh, this lets them know that I have explosives coming though, right? Nova Chaser Hype, Turk and with the with the big bits, thank you. Marty Punker, I'm here for blood. 24 month resubscription, thanks for sticking it out. Nova Chaser, Mono Red Nova Chaser. Yep, I'm pushing that one right on up. I'm gonna grab Pyrite Spellbomb here, hoping they name Pyrite Spellbomb. Restore balance went a little bit medium this morning. Please name Pyrite Spellbomb. Please name Pyrite Spellbomb. Please name Pyrite Spellbomb. Yes! Ha ha! I mean their mind. I mean their mind. They're about to kill us with Kessig Malcolm Tense off this file, but I'm excited for what has just happened. I'm excited for what has happened here. Don't Kessig Malcolm Tense me, bro. Yeah. The next, next level. No ghost confirmed, right? Right? Oh. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, my God. The chalice of the void stops it. Oh, my God. Because, oh, geez, chat. Chat, I'm so dumb. Why am I so dumb, chat? Why am I so dumb? We got Thalia. We got Thalia Chalice Magic the Gathering. <laughs> what a scrubby fish. What a scrubby fish. Good fish and big middle. I was like, and this doesn't care about Thalia. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. We're making some mistakes here. It's fine. It's fine. It's good. Good, clean Magic the Gathering chat. Good, good, clean. Ma nothing but the cleanest Magic the Gathering chat. Nothing but the cleanest of Magic the Gathering. So we're going to get this Mishra's Bobble. We're going to cast this Mishra's Bobble. We're going to pass the turn. We're only getting attacked for one this turn. Maybe two if they draw another Noble Hierarch. It's okay. It's okay. We're going to... We're gonna get there, we're gonna get there, slow and steady. There was a way around that. I needed to pay blue, blue, red for the engineered explosives. Because remember, I can cast engineered explosives with X equals two and pay three mana, but have it only be two colors. So there was in fact a way around what just happened there. Could have, could have avoided it had I been slightly smarter and thinner. It's good. We're learning. We're learning. This has been a good matchup. And like, honestly, if you're thinking about testing a deck for a tournament, the actual results that you're getting with the deck in terms of wins and losses, those aren't the important part. The important part is that you're learning something from the games that you're playing. That's that's the important part. So here, we're going to make the correct play. I'm going to discard this. I'm going to go get an engineered explosives. And this engineered explosives, I'm going to pay blue, blue, red for. And now I've paid two two colors with three total mana, so the sunburst is going to be two. And now next turn we can crack this. So we're going to take one more here, and then we can get this War of Invention going. 
and get this whir of invention going. Yep. Uh, Inventor's Fair is in my discard pile. Inventor's Fair is currently in my discard pile. Um... So what am I supposed to do here? Was I supposed to were for... Maybe I wasn't supposed to play this land out of my hand and I was supposed to were for the... What's it called? So that way I could kill these, deal with these noble hierarchs. No, I needed more blue at that point, Rev. So I'm dead in two to these idiots. My Pyrite Spell Bomb's already in my discard pile because we tried to mind game them. That didn't really work. Yeah, but like I had another Whir in my hand. Yeah, the, the mana base, I think, has too many colorless lands in it. I don't think you actually gain enough percentage points from the number of colorless lands that this deck is playing to be worth playing that many colorless lands. Yeah, I enjoy playing this deck a lot. There's a, there's a ton of really little things that are going on, and I enjoy a lot of them. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get Bottle Cloister here because we just need to draw into some gas, and this gives us an extra draw next turn. Were for map, map for runes, get spell bomb. Oh, that's a good line. That'd have been a good line if I'd thought about that. Oh, we also can't cast spell bomb because of Chalice of the Void, so that's bad. Chat, there's a Chalice on one chat. We'd really just like to draw engineered explosives here, which I have one copy of left in my deck. So we're probably dead. The refresh works, so take my Amazon fun money. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Yep, we're dead here. So I punted this game two different ways. And if I if I wouldn't have if our mana had been better too, we could have also like had this inventor start gaining us life early too. Runes, runes engineered explosives. Yeah, you're right. That that would have worked. Alright, at any rate, let's get these gear Perry Thurgoods in my deck. Says where I can get out of here. The spyglass, this pithing needle, this Tormod's crypt. Uh, these chalices are really bad. Um, Padima's fine. I think Spellskite's fine. It like blocks. Sun Droplet's fine. Yeah, I definitely. I, the last turn I should have gotten runes, and then I should have runes back in the Junior Explosives. Was the line? That was that was the line. The, the the second war should have gotten map, and then map should get academy runes, and then academy runes flips the engineered explosives up, and that clears the double hierarchs. D defense grid seems terrible. It's like just almost doesn't have a text box, like basically none. Maybe Tezzeret. Oh, Torporbs exactly. This is explicitly for this matchup, right? It's like this is this is the matchup. This is in our board for. They played Vithian Renegades. Yeah, I, I'm gonna leave two jars in. I don't think I want like they don't they don't have that many ways to find their stuff. Glimmer voids or spires. A couple of spires could be okay. Honestly, I kind of just want more basics. You really don't need that much red mana. Like the the one mountain and the opals and the ghost quarters to find them. Like this is this is fine. I'd probably just like I think I'd start by cutting this tech edge. No, I think that we don't really care about the aether vial. I'm gonna try this. Yeah, I'm gonna try this. Nope. Never played a list with spires in it. Seems fine. Not super exciting, but fine. It's 
macro, like micro macro. Sounds good. Macro Olympics. It's easy to remember. This is good though. I feel like I feel like I learned something during that first game. And again, that that should ultimately be your goal. If your goal isn't to just farm magic online fun bucks, your goal, if your goal is to become a better magic player, the ult your ultimate record isn't the important thing. The important thing is what did you learn something and become a better magic player from the games that you played? That should be your ultimate goal. No, you don't want to replace the mountain with the steam vents. You want to be able to get the mountain when you go score to yourself. That's why there's a basic mountain. So you, def you definitely want a basic mountain in this deck. It's not That's not particularly close. I love the long, the, the read sun droplet long pause. That's my favorite pause. I can always tell a deck is really sweet and has a lot of complex lines when I like, I look at the clocks and my clock is lower than my opponent's because like I play magic exceptionally fast. So if I'm, if I'm behind on clock, you know, you know, the game's been, you know, I've had a lot of, a lot of decision points. Deal, you have Athalia. Um, am I just going to EE for one here? I think I'm just going to EE for one and blow it up. like kill this kill this you can't set sun droplet to always yes actually i don't think maybe let me check i'll right click on it when i get to their turn let's find out together shall we nope you can always yield but you can't set always yes So thankfully, our hand is like three good cards here, right? What problem are you are you solving that this deck has by playing Drown Yard as opposed to Ipnu Rivulet? That's always always my question. What what problem are you fixing that this deck has by making that change, Duckles? S sell me on it. Why why would I want to do that? I already have other win conditions that let me play through Graveyard Hate. I don't think Graveyard Hate is a problem I need to solve. Yeah, Double Droplet is fantastic. I don't, I don't think Graveyard Hate is a problem I need to solve. So, so if my opponent has Graveyard Hate active, I haven't bridged the game to the point where I'm ready to start winning, and that's fine. I can just start winning a little bit later. I think those are my thoughts on the matter. My thoughts on the matter is, what problem are you trying to solve by making that change? And I can't think of any problem that I'm looking to solve personally with that change, so that means it's probably not a good change. If it doesn't, if a change you make to a deck list doesn't actively solve a problem that the deck list has, it's not a good change. But that's, again, I'm going to ask you the same question. What problem does this deck have that adding Tezzeret solves? It's always, always the question. It's not, it's not even just this deck. That's the, just a question about magic in general. Whenever, whenever you're building and tuning a deck list, you're like, all right, what issue am I having and how does this card fix it? I honestly haven't I honestly haven't played the deck enough to really know what a bad matchup is. This deck felt pretty reasonable in every matchup that we've played. If I'm being completely honest, I I feel like I have had the tools I need to win every game of Magic I have played with this deck. So if we hit a untapped land tier, we did not. I was going to say we could were. I 
No, I don't think Tron's that bad of a matchup. I think you have all the tools you need to beat Tron. I conceded to Tron earlier tonight because we don't have Damping Sphere. And the first time I play this deck in a real tournament, I will have access to Damping Sphere. So the Tron matchup is harder than it will be next week. So I wasn't going to slog through it when it's harder than it needs to be. I think if you are trying to make this deck win faster, you don't understand why this deck is good and how, how to play it. This, this deck isn't about winning quickly. It's not. I could wear that turn. I can't wear for four, sorry. When I said I can't wear, what I meant was I couldn't wear for four to get Bottled Cloister because getting Bottled Cloister is what I want. There's a Thalia in play, so I could only wear for three there. That is, that is what I meant. I didn't articulate that, and I apologize for articulating that. So when I said I couldn't wear, I didn't mean we didn't have the colors. I meant... Uh, I meant that I didn't. Why do I care about this Thalia? What is the what does the Thalia do? What problem is the Thalia causing that I need to solve? Hey, JW, with the 16 month resubscription. Thanks a lot. Welcome back. I appreciate it. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Just grab bottled cloister to lock them out of attacking, except for noble heroic beats. Again, Gabriel Pants, my question my question is the same. People, stop. Don't don't sell me on making changes. Sell me on the way you need to approach deck building and deck tuning is tell me a problem that this deck experiences, a hard matchup, a difficult issue that you're having when playing this deck, and then make a case for me why the change you want to make to the deck at a fundamental level fixes the problem that you're trying to address. That's 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 what you need to do. I'm not going to sit here and shoot down your ideas. That's that's a waste of my time. What I want you to do is I want you to sell me on why your idea is a good idea, and then we can talk about it and have a dialogue. But if you can't convince me your idea is good, it's probably not worth discussing. Oh no. Uh, am I dead? Am I dead? I'm running out of time on Magic Online isn't a valid isn't valid in my opinion. So I'm I punted this game. I should have set myself up with a welding jar to play through this. This was this is on me. So we get two draws here and a winner. Let's see if I can get around this. Inventors fair. I think we're dead. I think we're dead. Yeah, I'm one I'm one mana short now, right? Yeah, I could have I could have waited on the were, right? Yeah. Yeah, playing the were proactively was just like me talking with chat and just like not paying attention. So I'm going to 10 and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's such a stupid comment. Oh, I made a mistake on my timing and the human's deck is gonna win. The human's deck is really good. No, I made a mistake on my timing. I made a mistake on my timing, that's okay. Yeah, the spell bomb can cycle. I'm just making sure I've cleared all the things and that cycling the spell bomb is what I need to do. We're not that vulnerable to Stony Silence. Shatterstorm, I agree, is a problem. Cruci Crucify MTG with the three-month resubscription. Thank you very much. A quarter of a year. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. I do appreciate the support. I also don't think there's enough Shatterstorms in the format to like be worth playing around. Yeah, I, th I think the line is thin my deck and then draw a card here. And draw a card here. Let's see where we go from there. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's thin and then draw and try and hit a bridge. I think that's the line. Got super, super punished by this Reclamation Sage for my sequencing on this. There we go. That's my favorite. 
Easiest way to get permanently banned? Complain about how I manage my chat. No, I'm short on putting, I'm one mana short, two mana short because of the Thalia. Yeah, I think we just have to have to draw here. Yep, good games opponent. So I feel like I threw both those games in the garbage can. I feel like I had more than enough tools to win both of those games. I just came up and just uh, out played myself into a corner effectively. <laughs> nice glimpse. I think the big problem a lot of streamers have is that a lot of people are very desperate for everyone on the internet to be their friend and they don't realize that one life is too short to try and make that happen and two there's enough conflicting personalities that no matter how hard you try you're gonna piss some people off regardless so you should just make your life reasonable and we're 2-1 we're in matches we've actually played and I think the deck would be 3-0 if there was someone that was better at magic playing it And again, like, the reason that it has so many lines is one of the reasons why I'm enjoying playing it, really, is because, like, I feel like I'm learning something in every match that I play. And I, 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 I genuinely don't always feel like that when I play when I play Magic. It's been, it's been a while since I've had a deck that has this much going on, where every time I finish a game of Magic, I'm like, wow, I could have done the other thing and then probably gotten the result that I wanted here. So I mulliganed that first hand because it was just a lot of dirtle and like if the graph digger's cage wasn't going to be good, the hand wasn't going to be good. Took Mishra's bubble. Okay. The Pyrite Spell Bomb is just, think of the Pyrite Spell Bomb as like a split answer win condition card. It does both. Does both, basically. All right, so we're going to cast a Spyglass on, on one here and hopefully name the same fetch line that they have multiple copies of. Please have, like, three Bloodstained Myers in your hand. Well, that's a major tilt. Uh, uh, I guess I'm naming Liliana the Veil. I guess I'm naming Liliana the Veil. My hand doesn't do much, at least. And for the hundredth time tonight, I have this War of Invention in my hand and just like don't have blue mana. <clears throat> People who blame the speed of their magic deck winning for why they get draws don't understand why they're getting draws in magic. People that draw in magic just play too fucking slowly. If, you, if you're drawing consistently in Magic, you need to play faster. And if you're a slow player, you should play an aggressive deck so your deck can win quicker. Uh, yeah, just a whole lot of nothing going on. Do, do, do. I played... I played over 400 sanctioned matches of Magic between every year in 2014, 2015, and 2016. I drew less than a dozen matches unintentionally in that time span. So over a thousand matches drew less than a percent. How many blue sources do I think this deck needs? That's a good question. I need to do some math. Need to, need to actually just like pump it through a hyper geo and like come to an educated conclusion on that, I think. Yeah, people, people also need to tell their opponents to play faster. My, my favorite line when I was playing a bunch of competitive magic, if I finished game one in a, in a match of magic and I look at the clock and there's less than 17 minutes and we've used more than 17 minutes in game one, so that means there's less than 33 minutes left on the clock, I always made a point to say to my opponent, hey, 
I'm going to try and play faster for these next two games because if we don't play faster, we won't be able to finish on time. And most people are reasonable and they pick up the pace when you put it in that very, very friendly and affirming matter. It's both players' responsibilities to make sure that you're going to have enough time to finish your match of magic. And most people are very open and receptive to that and they understand that draws are bad for both players. And then if for whatever reason your opponent doesn't pick up the pace, call a judge. But just just that small, gentle nudge, just like, there's some people that just like, magic's really complicated. There's a lot going on when you're playing a lot of the time. It's very easy to just not, not be, um, it's very easy for people to just like not be conscious of the clock because they're new to magic or they're new to their deck or they're just, you know, there's other things on their mind. So if you are conscious of the clock and you can help other people be conscious of the clock, you'll draw far fewer matches. F, F and M is whatever. Like I, and again, like when I'm talking about the things I'm doing, I'm talking about them in the context of like a competitive REL tournament. Um, that's not strictly true, Prospero Knight. You only get two extra turns in extra turns if the judge issues a formal slow play warning. So just calling a judge to watch for slow play doesn't entitle you to extra turns. I think I'm just taking this hit for two here. Although blowing the engineered explosives up here means that my opponent's blood gas won't have haste, so that's kind of appealing. Yeah, I think I'm just going to pull the trigger on this. I'm going to go ahead and welding jar my spyglass here. So they have a hero's downfall and then one card I don't know in their hand. I'm just going to go ahead and thin my deck here. This ghost quarter is not doing anything else against their mono black deck. And draws being better than losses are depending on like what you're trying to get out of your tournament and like where you're at. Sometimes draws are effectively losses if you're only playing for top eight, at which point you should probably be the bigger person and concede. If I if I'm playing for top if if my opponent and I are playing and drawing puts us both out of top eight range and winning keeps one of us in top eight range. If my opponent is very adamant about not conceding, I'll usually concede most of the time, especially at smaller tournaments where like top 16 isn't meaningful. Like if I don't care about top 16ing, yeah, whatever, you can take it. Hey, look, the card I wanted to, wanted to get anyways. God damn Shuffler, thank you for the Twitch Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Are we done here? Are we good? Can your mono black deck take this card off the table, opponent? God, God bless an opponent that knows their limits. All right, so what are we doing? <laughs> Welding Jar probably isn't particularly good, right? No, I've, I've never played a Pro Tour before. Uh, qualifying for the Pro Tour takes an obnoxious amount of money and effort. And I'd, I've always viewed Magic as a hobby that could give me some return on itself. And if I was playing events that could qualify me for the Pro Tour, it was going to cost me significantly more money to play my hobby and if my hobby cost me more money i can play it less often so i wasn't really interested in like playing less magic by by focusing on events like the scg tour that had a little bit better cash ev i was able to break even better is gray merchant is gray merchant does that get through which bane orb i think it does actually each opponent it really really does huh torpor orb that there we go there we go there's the torpor we figured it out. i was like we have we were supposed to have answers for everything chat found the torpor orb found the line ensnaring bridge and opener check double ensnaring bridge and opener double check
SCG famous. And that's, 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 that's a funny way to put it, SCG famous. Um, yeah, I think so. I think a lot of the people that are on the SCG tour are there because the cash EV is better. What's the cut for damping sphere? I don't know. I need to think about it. You know, no, please, please don't go out there for me. Is this a collective brutality? Yeah, dicks out for harem B. Ain't nobody got, ain't nobody got no instance or sorceries opponent. Get out of here. They could have ratchet bomb post board. They could have ratchet bomb post board. I'm gonna play this for zero so I can cast a bridge this turn. That, that's a thing that just happened. Yep. That's, that's a thing that just happened. When do we get a Justin the Enabler emote like the Anironix one? <laughs> I'm out of emotes, lots big Emmer cool. I mean, uh, honestly, playing small local magic tournaments, if you're good at magic, those are pretty good cash EV. Like, the, in, no dis, in the, in the least disrespectful way possible, playing tournaments with less than 100 people, the player caliber dips significantly. I'm just, I think it just, in my experience, there, there's probably exceptions to that statement. And I feel like someone's gonna clip this and talk about arrogant hog land on the internet somewhere. But in my experience, having played a ton of events that are really tiny, like sub 100, sub 50 player events, like they are much easier to win matches of Magic at than, than an Open or a Grand Prix. I cut Possessed Portal from the sideboard because the person that originated this archetype cut Possessed Portal from their sideboard. I feel like, I feel like enough people don't realize that they're just like a thoroughly large fish in a small pond. Wait, did I say that? Did I say that inverse? A thoroughly large fish in a small. Oh, I said that right. A thoroughly large fish in a small pond. I feel like, I feel like, and it, and that's okay. It's okay to just you know stomp around. Nah, Justin, I'm I'm even talking about like you know I traveled to you know Chicago, Indianapolis, St. Louis. Those are all like major metropolitan areas, and played like you know. 30 to 80 player tournaments at like every weekend for almost three years. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get bottled cloister here, right? Just start drawing extra cards. All right, it looks like in spite of just conceding to Tron and punting the humans, we're probably going to squeak out of this with a 3-2. So like 3-1 and actual matches played once you once you discount the one that I didn't I didn't play out fully. Um yeah, we're going to keep playing this deck. I need to I need to confirm I need to confirm with Christy 
that I can go to the Louisville Open, but I think we're gonna set up a donation goal of some sort to like play this deck at the Open. Probably do a, a, a threshold to get me to the Open that'll cover the cost, plus an extended threshold to do a 12 hour tuning stream. I, the Howling Mind deck wasn't very good, but I, I genuinely had fun playing the same deck and grinding it into grinding it into something something better or different. It wasn't even that. That's true. When you pack one in, our, our opponents conceded pretty aggressively there too when they were locked out of the game. And honestly, like people like to keep comparing this deck to Lantern just because they both play in Snaring Bridge. One of the things this deck does better than Lantern Control is it's very obvious when you're not going to win the game against this deck for most people and they pack it in. Most people are willing to concede far sooner to this deck than they did to Lantern Control. That could also be the fact that this deck is newer and the salt hasn't been quite as firmly ground into their veins as playing against Lantern Control. So they're just like not bitter towards it yet. Threshold for you to wear fake prison clothes in the open. Maybe, Marty, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. All right, what are we... What costume are we trying for? That's, everybody wants to know what we're dressing up as. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. All right, anywho. So that finishes up that one. <laughs> uh, good luck punishing waterfalls. All right, it wouldn't be this stream if we didn't close out with a meme, right? It wouldn't it wouldn't be this stream. Let me let me tell you about the memes. You know, you know it's a meme when we're registering for gray ogres, right? You know it's a meme when we're registering for gray ogres. Nothing. Everything fair and honest in modern begins with gray ogre. Let's go grab some cards from MTGO Traders. Is this mana base okay? Yeah, I think the mana base is fine. Dress up as a prison guard. How does this meme win? That's that's the fun part, chat. Look at this deck list and figure out the combo. There's a combo in this deck. Everybody, don't spoil it in chat. Don't spoil it in chat. Let everybody try and figure it out. Let everybody try and figure it out. There's, there's an infinite combo in this deck. There's an infinite combo in this deck, chat. Everybody, test your magic skills. <laughs> Kiki Jiki is a tricky man. He is a tricky magic card. You're not wrong. He is a tricky magic card. The four drop is necrotic ooze. It's the the key part to the combo, if you would. Stream decker is taking forever to load. It is now updated. Stream Decker being updated probably helps you in figuring out what the combo is. So it's updated now. 70, 70, sweep. 